What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be doing a five month update on the 125 gallon planted tank I have here in the fish room. Now, if you've missed this build or you're not familiar with this tank, I will link the build video in the description as well as the comment section. So you guys can check that out after this video or you can pause here, go watch it and come back and watch the update. Either way, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I first wanna start off by saying, yes, I understand that this is a saltwater channel, but there will always be fresh water on here one way or another because that's really where I started off. I started with fresh water between the ages of 12 and 15, somewhere around then. I don't really remember exactly how old I was, but my first tank was a 30 gallon. I got some guppies and then I went ahead and got an Oscar who ate the guppies and then it just was snowballed and here I am now with a 300 gallon reef. So it just progressed and uh, that's kind of how a lot of you guys started too was with the fresh water side of things. And um, I just want to share it with you guys because it's really, this tank is for me. It's not really for anybody else. Um, I know people who come over and buy coral, they really enjoy seeing this tank. And it's more or less, it's right next to my desk, right right to the right-hand side. If How many times I can say right? You know what I mean. It's right there. And I can just look over and see the fish and have a, a great time, uh, you know, zoning out when I'm supposed to be getting work done. But, yeah, I love this tank. There are a couple things that I would change about it, and I'll get into that here in a second. But I overall love the uh, movement of the fish, the coloration, and of course the growth of the plants is insane with the amount of CO2 that I'm dropping in this thing. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the update now that I got that little rambling out of the way. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is what I would change in this tank. The number one thing would be the substrate. Now, if you remember in the build video, I mentioned that I always use the uh, miracle Grow Organic Choice Potting Mix for my natural substrate. Now, because they no longer make it or it's discontinued or maybe they changed the name, either way, I cannot find it. So I had to go with a different organic type of uh, potting mix, which I picked up at Lowe's. I'll try to find the picture and put it on the screen, but it, it's in the uh, build video. But I will say that the only mistake that I made with that is I should have, or basically in hindsight, I should have actually just soaked it for several weeks, put it in water, kind of drained it, did big 50% or maybe 100% water changes, getting that extra phosphates out of there because it was pretty disgusting. A couple weeks in after actually setting up the tank, there was a ton of algae. The nutrients were off the charts. I was doing huge water changes. I mean, 60 gallons twice a week with RODI. And I use a lot of RODI here already with the multiple systems in the fish room. And then you just add another 120 gallons a week. It just was crazy with the amount of water changes that I was doing to keep those nutrient levels down. So in hindsight, I would have soaked the dirt or the substrate, getting rid of some of that nutrients before adding it to the tank. And I'll do that in the future, knowing that I can no longer get that organic choice potting mix. Now, luckily for me, I only had to do those big water changes for a couple weeks to really bring those nutrients down. And then I moved out to every other week for about 50 gallons or so. And now I'm out to once a month, 50 gallon water change. Now I am starting to notice that I am getting a little bit more algae because I am feeding a little bit more food for the fish uh, because they tend to start beating the crap out of each other, especially those rainbows. They start to be really aggressive if they're uh, not eating enough. So I've been feeding them a little bit more. So I'm probably going to have to go back to the every other week, 50 gallons to kind of help the tank as it's still maturing because it's going to take uh, several months for this tank to really establish itself, the plant growth to really take over any of that uh, small amount of algae that might be popping up here and there, especially when those Amazon swords get up there and that um, grass in the back and those bigger plants. Once that stuff starts really taking over the tank, I won't have to do uh, as often water changes because they'll really be filtering the system and I can just sit back and pretty much do nothing. All right, the next thing I want to do is just address a question that you guys have had in the comment section, and that is, why did I go with the type of lighting that I have, and what was the reason for it overall? Well, the main reason was to save money. It's a lot cheaper to go ahead and build yourself a canopy, hanging canopy, and then do the uh, type of DIY lighting that I did. Uh, when it comes to a fixture for the six-foot tank that's going to give me enough output or par for these plants to grow, I'm looking at several hundred dollars. Uh, for this, I spent probably under a hundred dollars, and that was with all the bulbs and everything, and that's really what cost the most money. I think it's two of these 5K 120 watt um, Home Depot bulbs. I, same thing I use on my Refugium. You guys have seen them in the past. I think it's like ten dollars for two bulbs or something like that, and there is uh, 15 on this tank. So. It's a ton of light. I actually only run uh, 12 right now because the extra is just too much light. I don't need that much light. And um, I always have it if I decide that I want to put more carpeting plants. That um, dwarf hair grass is doing quite well with the current lighting setup. So if something was to change, I have a little bit extra leeway and I can always add three more bulbs. Now, if you guys have any more questions about this system, feel free to put them in the comment section and I will answer those individually. 
So for the rest of the video, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I do for maintenance on this system. Uh, right now, it sits at about three weeks. I haven't done anything, no cutting, no water changes, no nothing. And I'm going to go in here and show you guys exactly what I do when it comes to trimming up the tank to make it look a little bit neater and then perform a pretty big water change. Now, when it comes to the plants in this tank, the only one that really gives me a hard time is the Lewidia. Um, it is a stem plant, and the way it grows is it just keeps reaching, okay? So if you cut off the top, it's just going to keep going. Obviously, that's how plants grow. But the problem is, is that the root structure follows it up towards the top. What I mean by that is that the roots will eventually be just taking over everything. They get really fluffy. They look just dumb. So... Uh, in this video, I'm actually going to trim it down pretty low and get rid of a lot of the roots. And then I'll give you guys a couple weeks later what it looks like when the plant is starting to come back. And uh, yes, it does look pretty bad after I trim off a ton of this. But rest assured, it will look better over time. And that's really the only downside I have with the Lagoidia and other stem plants is that the root structures just get nasty. And you guys can see that. It just it's not very neat and messes with me but i really love the plant i love the color of it so i just kind of deal with it and do these big hack jobs every once in a while to kind of uh, set it back and let it restart all right so the first thing we're going to do here is come in and cut off all the liquidia as down as far as i i think is appropriate now i still want to leave some leaves on there because i want the plant to be able to uh, pull in the light and continue to grow so you don't want to cut off all the leaves you do want to leave a few here and there just understand the more that you cut off the longer it's going to take for the plant to recover but again, the goal of this is to try to get down into the root structure, cut off as many of those roots as we can so it doesn't look as obnoxious as it currently does. So a couple of you brought up the idea of actually selling these plants online via eBay or maybe my website. And I'm actually going to set that up hopefully within the next couple of weeks. It's been on my to-do list of the million things I got going on here. But I do plan on selling them individually because I do feel bad cutting them and chucking them all in the trash. And you'll see how much I actually pull out of this tank. It's, it's kind of crazy and it's just it does feel like I'm throwing money away and that's just not a good feeling. So I will set that up at some point and I'll keep you guys in the loop either in a next update video or rambling or something letting you guys know know when that actually goes live. Now my whole thought process behind cutting plants is simply just to even things out. I don't want one plant being too dominant and I know with the Lewidia that's just a natural uh, dominant plant in a tank. It's just one of those that grows really fast and everything else is struggling to keep up. But I do envision the Amazon source to the left kind of taking over that whole side and going up over by the overflow. I like that um, uh, jungle vow in the back. I want that to come up and kind of go over the top of the tank and then have the Lewidia just managed on either the right and left side of the of the tank. I really want to want it to be even and that's why I come in here and cut everything just in hopes that everything else will uh, kind of get the boost because the Lagoidia is not pulling all the nutrients out using it to grow itself and by cutting it I'm, I feel like I'm letting the other plants uh, take over a little bit and get a foot and really start to grow helping the whole tank to really even out. So the next thing I like to do once I'm done trimming up the plants is I like to come in here and manually remove or uproot some of this jungle bow. Now, if you're not familiar on how this stuff grows, it sends runners underneath the substrate and then it can pop up anywhere in the tank. I've had it all the way to the left-hand side of a, a four-foot tank and it would literally show up on the right hand side a few weeks later with nothing in between it's pretty crazy how this stuff grows and uh, if you don't catch it early it will establish itself and when you go to rip it up it's just going to make a bigger mess pulling out more of the dirt underneath the gravel and it's just overall it could take over the tank if you don't want to manage it so keep that in mind when you're uh, using plants or having plants like jungle vow um, i do notice that it doesn't grow as fast when it's in a tank with luidia or another fast growing plant it seems to be a little bit more docile but if it's one of your main plants in the tank and you have a lot of it be prepared to uh, do some management or you're going to have it everywhere all right, so once I'm done cutting up the plants, the next thing we're going to do is manually remove as much of the plant matter as I can. Now, I'm going to do this with a net and with my hands. And just a heads up, guys, I use a, a separate net for every single tank in my fish room. And that's because I don't take any chances of cross-contamination between systems, even with a net. And uh, especially if you're quarantining fish, you don't want to be using your quarantine net for anything else. So this is just the one that I have here for the planted tank. But anyway, I go ahead and I remove all this stuff because I don't want to have to change the mesh filter again tomorrow. Uh, the point of this is just to make the tank crystal clear before I do my water change. And then I'll use the water change to get the rest of the plant matter out. Again, saving me a little bit of maintenance I'll have to do later in the week. 
Now, when it comes to the water change, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to pull out 50 gallons and try to get as much of the plant matter left over as I can and then replace it with RODI. Now, I like to go ahead and do the uh, equilibrium when I do my water changes to help replace and kind of buffer that RODI water. And uh, I've been doing that ever since I started using RODI for my planted tanks. And I know that you don't have to. And I know that the water that I have coming in here to the house is actually relatively clean. So... I guess maybe I don't need to use the RODI, but it's just been something I've been doing for a long time. And if it works, there's no reason to change it, right? So anyways, 50 gallon water change, replace it with RO and then use the equilibrium. All right, now that we have the water change done and the tank is filling back up, I'm gonna come in here and remove this filter floss. Now I pick up a pack of this stuff from eBay. I'll try to find the link for you guys, but basically it's like a three foot by 12 foot or something like that. And I just cut little squares out and put it on my plastic rack and use it to uh, filter the tank. Now it does uh, catch 99% of the uh, leaves and stuff that fall over, but because it doesn't fit all the way in there and I, the way I have it set up, it, some of the detritus does get to the bottom of the sump and every once in a while I'll come in there and, and shop vac all that stuff out during a water change. And uh, you guys could probably notice if you've seen the previous video on this tank that that I used to have marine pier and that it's no longer in there. Now the reason for that is I don't know what happened but as soon as um, I removed the marine pier because I had a feeling that it was collecting detritus I removed it cleaned out the sump and the whole tank just did a 180 was clearer the algae started going away and the tank just looked a thousand times better so I don't know what's up on marine pier I found the um, aluminum in my saltwater tank when I did the ICP test I removed it did another ICP test a couple months later, aluminum was gone, and then having issues with uh, nutrients and detritus here in the planted tank, removed it, now it's better. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm kind of done with Marine Pier for now, and uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, because I don't really know what the deal is. might be just my, my luck, but I don't need it. Everything else is uh, working out just fine. But uh, anyway, the tank is pretty much done at this point. I just got to finish filling it up, add my equilibrium to the sump. I know that you're supposed to mix it with water and put it in there. I like to just put a couple scoops on the um, filter pad and then just let it naturally kind of mix itself as water's running through. And then, of course, the tank is going to be cloudy for a few hours, but it's, it's going to be fine. It, it, there's never been an issue. I've never had any problem with fish death or plant issues doing it that way, and that's kind of the lazy man way, I guess. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and fast forward a couple weeks. I'll show you guys what the tank looks like now, now that the Glowidian stuff is starting to come back. And uh, yeah, hope you like it. All right, so here is about three weeks after trimming the tank. And you can see that everything is growing just fine. Um, I am getting a little bit of algae. And I notice this when I do these big cuts because I'm not obviously pulling out as much nutrients and the substrate is relatively new. I do get a little bit extra algae on the plant leaves, but once the Liguidia starts really taking over again, that stuff just completely disappears. And at this point, I really don't feed the fish that much because they are picking at that extra algae. And um, if they start getting a little aggressive, I'll feed them more, but they uh, seem to be fine and everybody is doing quite well. But uh, yeah, guys, that's about it for this video. I don't want to ramble on too much. I hope you enjoyed it. I try to do a little bit more of a laid back kind of video, not as much editing and just kind of making the content a little bit more uh, natural of who I am. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give the uh, video a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down because that's going to help me either way. And I do appreciate those. So anyways, guys, I will see you later. And um, I'll probably do a rambling video tomorrow because I am going out hunting. So I might do something. I don't know. If not, I'll see you guys Monday. Peace.